The RX 6500 XT has been launched and it is going down as one of, if not the worst GPU launch in history. And it's ironic that it comes at a time where Intel, AMD and Nvidia are entering into a whole new economic environment that they have never seen in PC gaming before. And so with that, I believe the potential for these companies to make mistakes is huge as evidenced with what AMD have done with the 6500 XT. However, in hindsight, AMD will really have to take a step back after this launch and perhaps look from the likes of an auto manufacturer like Toyota to see how to conduct business going forward. So let's discuss all things RX 6500 XT right after this sponsor spot. Are you tired of seeing this annoying activate Windows message? Then if so, today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as $14 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get activated today. Works for Windows 11 Pro too. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and let's start off with the problem and that is the RX 6500 XT's price point. And I'm going to point out the price point because here is where in Australia this card is coming in at MSRP and it's been in stock for a few days now. I have not seen this on a graphics card in over a year that's been launched. And then we've got in America, this card is in stock, even though the retailers are jacking up the price a bit, it seems, versus the MSRP. However, you can be rest assured that the longer these cards sit on the shelves for, the sooner they'll come down in price. So we've got a card that not only has been received by the press poorly and even then, the press, at least in Australia, there was only one sample uh, seeded to the press in Australia. So I've actually bought one of these to um, include it in the upcoming RTX 3050 review, but I'll be doing a separate review a little bit later on this card. But most importantly, it has been received by the consumer as being exceptionally poor value for money, even at its current shelf price. Now, one thing I will get out of the way is this card is, in my opinion, absolute proof that crypto miners have been buying up the majority of graphics cards, where this card is just simply not even going to mine Ethereum, and it can mine these altcoins, which are actually crashing and giving out such little profitability that it's not worth miners to buy this card, even at these current prices. And so that then leaves the brunt of this card and its price to the gamer. And the gamers, as we said before, really aren't taking too much of a liking to this GPU. Though looking at the card, simply the biggest problem here is the price. AMD have launched this card at 200 USD with four gigabytes of VRAM in 2022. And look, I'll be the first to admit, inflation is a problem. However, how companies delve into that inflationary environment and what they do for the consumer is ultimately gonna spell the biggest winners and losers, especially in tech, in years to come. And AMD will definitely take a step back after this launch and realize what went wrong. And so as we've said in the past, there is a thing known as the misery index. And so that is the sum of inflation plus unemployment. And the higher the true values of these go together, the more miserable the average member of that society will become. And this has been proven, especially during a previous period, the 1970s. And now in the 1970s, there was a high inflationary environment and it was marked as the decade of stagflation, where finally they were able to bring things under control. However, here's where the problem starts for AMD and also Intel and Nvidia if they wanna follow AMD's footsteps. And that is, the problem is these companies like AMD, Nvidia and Intel have not been making products for PC gamers during a high inflationary environment. In other words, they don't know how to weather the storm and I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of human beings on the earth do not know how to weather this storm. And that is what a company should do in this inflationary environment. Since AMD and Nvidia and Intel do not have experience with selling PC gaming parts during this period. However, as we said in the intro, there is one company that has gone through this, even though it's in a different sector, and they have emerged a victor, not only during the 1970s, but they also emerged victorious now, even to this date. And that is Toyota. And they are the number one manufacturer globally for car sales. And they're simple. They've built up brand loyalty and a good reputation. For instance, if I'm looking for good value in a car that is not going to break down, I'm just gonna go out and buy a Toyota. And the reason being is because from my past experience, 
I've never had a Toyota that's broken down. In fact, the thing just keeps going even when I don't service the car. So that's left a really good imprint on me as well as the fact that I paid pretty good market rate for that car compared to what else was available on the market. And on top of that, I'm also gonna to recommend to my friends, go buy a Toyota if you want a reliable car that's good value. And so circling back to the RX 6500 XT, we're gonna focus on one of those points that we talked about before, value. And in my opinion, it's value that creates the second point that we talked about, brand loyalty. And so here's where we're looking at the value of this card. 200 US dollars, four gigabytes of VRAM, worse performance, than previous cards that they have released at the same price point, but not only on top of that, they're also giving you less features, not even including a video encoder, so you can't record your gameplay. And on top of all that, only having four by four PCIe 4.0 lanes, meaning if you put it on a PCIe 3.0 slot or even a 2.0 slot from some of those good used bargains like X58, you'll be met with even poorer performance, making this card an absolute slouch. So even factoring in inflation, I think this card wouldn't have been so poorly perceived if it came in at say 150 US dollars. And in fact, with AMD, they should have done the opposite. And here is why they should have done the opposite. They should have brought this card out at around, I believe, 140, possibly even 130 USD. And you may be thinking, why is this? Well, it gets back to that brand loyalty. So at 200 US dollars, AMD has clearly gone the opposite direction and said, look, we want to get the highest profit margins on the graphics cards, whether it's the low end or the high end. And so they've really let that profit taking mentality sink to the low end of the market, which it should never really be a focus of the low end. The low end should be to build brand loyalty for a company. And here's where AMD, I believe, has not only failed, but catastrophically failed hard. So now if we couple in that much higher price, that is much poorer value and combine it with the higher misery index, that is people are much more miserable right now at this point in time than they were in the previous GPU launches, we've got combined together a recipe for disaster. And that is exactly what we're seeing with the PR department and AMD at this point in time. They're dealing with a nightmare coupled on with the fact that they are flip-flopping now and they're deleting posts off their website. And then years later, they're launching a graphics card with four gigabytes for the gamers. It is just ultimately not a good look for brand loyalty. If anything, you should be doing the same as you've always done. That is possibly a $150 price point GPU USD, but I think you should have done the opposite. And so that is where in these times you can give the fair value that you've always given with the graphics cards and that'll keep business as usual, or you can go the opposite direction and offer the consumer better value for money, therefore linking together better brand loyalty. And in turn, just like Toyota's showing, that will pay off in the long run. So economically, hopefully this makes sense of the situation that AMD is in at the moment. And going forward, they are going to be forced by the customer, that's you and me, to deftly bring down prices and offer better value. As events like these will not only be a wake up call for the consumer, but ultimately a wake up call for AMD in that they can't get away with this kind of behavior. And as I've said here for years at Tech Yes City, do not give these companies your blind loyalty. Always judge them on the product they're giving you at a certain price. If Toyota was to release a product on the market that was terrible value, then that would tarnish their brand loyalty and they know that. So it's very important for these companies to get the price point right, especially given the economic environment, which right now is bad, but I think it's going to getting worse. So the companies that want to survive will have to offer the best value. Anyway, guys, hope that explains the problem that AMD is facing right now. And you can best be assured that prices will be getting better if this is the kind of events that companies like AMD will try to pull on the consumer. And it's not going to get any better for them. They are going to have to rethink what they're going to do. I've just simply offered them some advice on what to do. Because again, as Toyota's showing, when you take care of the consumer, you're taking care of yourself. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video at what went wrong at AMD, the GPU and marketing division. Hopefully they take a step back and learn from this as it's really not good press for them to be getting these kinds of reviews. But ultimately, the consumer at the end of the day will always decide with their wallets. Now, unfortunately, previously with graphics cards, 
part of that consumer base has been crypto miners. But as the price of Ethereum goes down and also the difficulty goes up, especially with the introduction of ASIC miners and also the potential for Ethereum to move to proof of stake, a lot of miners are getting nervous and they're probably not going to be buying as many GPUs as previous. And there may even be a lot of miners starting to preemptively sell their graphics cards. So I do expect graphics cards to come down in the near future. If you wanna know more about this, I made a dedicated video talking about all the other factors involved. I'll put the link up here for you guys. And with that aside, we've got the question of the day. And this comes from Penny Pancakes and they ask, are you gonna give it some tech yes lovin' crack a lackin'? And this is in relation to me putting up a post on the community tab talking about uh, me not getting a sample and also purchasing an RX 6500 XT just to give you guys a review. But more importantly, give the numbers for the 6500 XT in relation to the upcoming RTX 3050, where I think Nvidia are a lot more confident in their product than AMD is with the 6500 XT launch. But to answer that question directly, it doesn't matter what PC part it is, you can bet your bottom dollar that I'm gonna be giving that part some tech, yes, loving, crack a lackin'. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you've stayed this far and you wanna see that tech, yes content as soon as it drops, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell. And also if you wanna get some behind the scenes access where I do some vlogs, just talking about things that I'm doing personally in the market, Last month, we did talk about a lot of economic indicators in some of these vlogs as to why I think the GPU prices were going to drop. I'll put a link down in the description below for you guys. And with that aside, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.